everyone. A subscriber of mine recommended me to take a look at a plugin for Photoshop, and so that's exactly what we are going to do. And uh, this plugin has been around for a while. I just never heard of it, but it does stuff like this. And this works with all different types of images, landscape versus portrait, maybe uh, product shots, architectural shots. So let's take a look at this really fast and let's jump into our program. This is a before, and you know I'm not a landscape photographer, but this is just a stock image I took or got, I should say, and used the plugin to come up with that. Uh, something like this came up with that. Very subtle, but we'll take a look at this. How about night photography? There's a before and after on that. How about something like this? It could be a product shot or life, you know, a still life photo, just to class that up a little bit like that. How about something like this? I'm actually going to do this for you with the plugin to go from this to that. It's really easy, really fast. I love this plugin. Also, Portrait to do something like that. This is a little bit more on the radical side for me, and it is pushing this out of the box creatively to use that plugin. And then the last one is taking something like this and making it look like that. So, are we ready for this? Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to the channel, this is dedicated to photography and as a photo artist and trying to push ourselves creatively out of the box to think differently with our work. With that out of the way, let's jump into today's program. And I would like to thank one of my viewers and subscribers, and that would be Gary M. Remember, I'm not using last names. Uh, just give credit to Gary on this. Um, he asked me to take a look at this plugin. He has no affiliation with it. I don't either. Uh, I didn't know this plugin has been around for a few years, but I've never heard of it. So the link will be in the description. Uh, uh, but the uh, the name of the company is right here, www.compositenation.com. So if you go there, they've got a product. Let's go to the website. Let's take a look at this right now. And by the way, I apologize for this right up front. Um, this is recorded on December 15th, but you're not doing this till um, probably the middle of January uh, 2025. Um, and the reason is, is that I've been on the road traveling during the holidays and I don't have time to do the video. So I was pushing the videos out uh, ahead of time and stuff. So anyhow, uh, Black Friday, uh, I did pick this up. I did pay for it. So let me get my uh, disclaimers out of the way with this. Number one is um, I have no affiliation with the plugin. I was impressed with it. I got the trial version, loved it. And uh, I ended up buying it. So we'll talk about pricing and that in a few minutes. Uh, number two, uh, I love the fact that, yes, it's both Mac and PC based. And then number three, because you have to pay for it, that means, like in this, there's updates. There was a 1.0 version, and then it was, a, I think, a 1.02 or something like that. Now we're up to 2.0. The fact is, there are upgrades very reasonable, and that means any kind of fixes and new features, once you have the product, you can continue on with it, if you wish, down the road. If you want to get updates, you don't have to. So that's sort of the good thing. All right, so let's, um, you know, like we got free plugins and how, you know, if you find errors in free plugins and you created a plugin, what incentive do you have to fix things when you're not making any money on the plugins? So it's very hard. Yes, it's very noble. You put things together and you're, uh, uh, you know, offering it for free out there, but free, you know, you only get what you pay for, right? So if there's bugs and things like that, and you're waiting for that person to fix it, it might take a long time because the incentive is not there. When you go out to buy something, you know that this is going to be supported and that there will be fixes and upgrades and that kind of stuff. So that's a good thing about it. All right, let's take a look at the program and uh, or actually the plug in. This is um, unfortunately December 15th was the last day of their specials. We'll get into the uh, uh, background here, but uh, about the pricing, but get the free trial. It's good for seven days. Beat it to death to see if it's worth the investment for you. We'll talk about license and what it costs toward the end. Let's scan down here real fast. There are tutorials to educate you. It supports the latest uh, M chips on a Mac. 32-bit, um, it handles really good. But check this out. Before and afters on this. This is incredible software. I love it. Even if you're just doing portraits, look at the stuff that you could do with portraits. 
We'll come back to portraits in a minute here. How about if you're just doing like product shots or cars, look at the light flares that you can add to this. And again, superheroes, composites, uh, the different glows. This is the new one, 2.0 versus their old version, 1.3. You know, so uh, again, constant updates. Again, just showing you the variation of the updates. Some examples again. And I love this look right there for like edge lighting and to drop in something like that. It's pretty cool. And again, befores and afters here as I slide that bar back and forth. And then one more thing. Let's get to the pricing down here at the very bottom. But there's just examples of work that can be done. Some of the artists and what they think about it. By the way, the plugin is called, I think it's pronounced Honoric. I'm not sure. But um, I love it. It was uh, worth it for me based on, you know, the, the type of work that I do. But let's take a look at pricing. Obviously, these specials are going away. But in my opinion, you get under a mailing list. Companies always have discounts and stuff uh, available to you. But $59, that's what I paid for the plug-in. It's good for two computers. I love it. And if I had an old version of this, look at the upgrade. $10 to upgrade for my two computers or something. So this is a bargain, in my opinion. Uh, again, I have no affiliation with them. I don't get kickbacks on this. Um, if we take a look at the studio license, that means up to 10 computers for $249. And if you had the old version, the upgrade, it's like $40 for 10 computers. This is a bargain. Obviously, it's a niche thing it does. In my opinion, this is the kind of software you're going to use at the end of your project, maybe just before you do color grading. I This is like, again, icing on a cake of your projects and stuff. So let's take a look at it. Let me close out of this. And uh, I'm going to do two projects for you in Photoshop. So let's find Photoshop. I know I have it running here somewhere. There we go. Okay, so let's start out with a product shot and then... We're going to do something, uh, a project I'm working on. It's a personal project, and I'll show you how I'm going to use it. But for right now, let's go over here, and I'm going to open up these three images. And we're going to take a look at the product shop first. So this is just edge lighting. And the way this works as a plugin, you'll find it under the plugin drop down menu. But I anchored mine right here on my toolbar on the far right side so I can access the plugin. And let me show you out of the box what you get. If I click on that one time and I'm going to click on new, now this is based on what they call a luminosity mask, which means the more uh, contrast you have from brightness to darkness, this product really shines and stuff. So this is out of the box, what it looks like. If I want to add some color to this, uh, by the way, down here in the lower right corner, there's an eyeball. This is my before, after, before, after. You can adjust the um, threshold of this. You can uh, do the exposure. You want to drop that down a bit. You could push that and it'll re-render. By the way, everything I'm doing is totally non-destructive. That's what's really cool. And I'll show you what that looks like in a few minutes. I'm going to come down here to the bottom though, and I'm going to activate color. And look at this. It activates a panel here called color. And I can move the slider and use all these different variations of colors. Is that cool? Now, I don't want to get into this, uh, this as a training class because it's not, but um, there's other features under effects that you can get into. But there's also, if you go to the far right, there's a category called presets. You can create your own look and feel and actually add this to that list. And it will record that and make it a preset for you because maybe it's a series of images that you're using and you want that same consistent look all the time. But they give you a set to start with. So if I choose like this right here, uh, watch it re-render. Does that look? Uh, let me come down to, um, I don't know, Fire Bloom. Let's see what that does. Might be very aggressive. That's pretty cool. About stadium blue lights. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can see how... Check that out. That is so cool. And if I go, okay, I like that. I mean, I could go back here and readjust the sliders. But if I say, hey, this is great, perfect for me. If I click on Save, watch what happens when I do this. This is why it's considered non-destructive. I started out with a single layer in Photoshop. And uh, this will add to that layer. So there we go. This is what it did. Totally non-destructive. I can turn it on and off. The cool thing is... With that selected, I could pull the opacity down if I want to adjust that before and after. 
Okay, so pretty cool product. I love this. You're going to add some just, you know, again, that icing on the cake at the very end before maybe you do color grading uh, in your project. Okay, I'm going to close out of this and I want to talk about a minor negative to this plugin. And that is, and maybe there will be in the future, I tried all different angles and techniques to try to make this uh, install in Affinity Photo 2 and it just it doesn't accept it at all so maybe that's something that will happen in the future but um again some of you people out there might be using affinity photo and uh just be aware that as of as of right now uh this is not going to work for you you'll have to be uh in photoshop okay let me close out of that and let's work on a project here by the way uh thanks for again gary m on this and if you're new to my channel uh, please consider liking the channel, uh, subscribe if you have not subscribed and hit that notification bell. That way, the next time I upload a video, you'll get notified. Okay, let's take a look at this image here. That That's basically straight out of the camera. Um, that was at a, gosh, I can't, this was years ago. I was at a convention and uh, they had a little cubicle set up with all these different characters and stuff. And I had taken that photograph. So I decided I'm gonna use that in a composite. So I'm going to close out of that. And this is what I'm going to use it with. Now, this composite is not done. I just did something simple. And that was I took the subject, cut them out, and dropped them into this background. So here's the background I'm working with. Okay. Now, I I'm, I'm still would be working on this, but let's just pretend I'm done and I'm going to add uh, this plugin to my composite here. So I'm going to select this layer right here. And that's the layer that has the image on it of the subject right there. So I'm going to come over here to activate this. Click on New and let it render out. Now, notice how it washes everything out. And that's because of the fact that uh, it's working in light areas, the luminosity, and because the background sky was very light, it's picking everything up and washing it out. Um, you could go and, and change you know, the threshold here in the dialog box, play around with exposure to drop it down. But my approach is going to be different. Check this out. I'm going to come down to the very bottom area here, and I'm going to choose Mask. Now, when I click on Mask, here's what happens. Everything goes back to normal, and nothing's being applied. I'm going to use the brush here with the mask. You can erase it, whatever. You can select things based on color and other things. But I'm going to go over the eyes here, and I'm going to double-click Actually, I'm going to do three, four times. So it builds on the opacity of this. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm just, this is just for demo purposes. I'm just highlighting these different areas. So it's going to apply what I want to do in the masked areas only, like this gun right here. I'm going to come down this, the total length of the gun, but I'm going to do it two, three times to build on that opacity so it's a bit stronger when I do this. Okay, I'm just, and again, I'm just randomly selecting spots because I just want you to see that this works differently now when you're using the mask. I'm telling it, here's where I want you to apply my effects. And then when I'm done, I just choose the check mark right there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate the say color right here. And the way you do that is coming down here to activate the color feature. So now the panel should be activated. There we go. I can change the hue of the color. We'll move it more toward the green side. Maybe I want it more toward the bluish green side. Let's just, and yeah, we'll do that right there. Um, I can actually increase the threshold of this if I want. So I'll let that render out, pull it back if I want. I can adjust the exposure. If I think it's too much, just pull that back. You got the idea. You, you're allowed to go tweak this. So let me turn this on and off by clicking on the eyeball. So there's before, after, before, after. In fact, I changed my mind. I want this to be more on the blue side, not magenta. So it's sort of like greenish blue. Yeah, there we go. I like that better. So again, personal preference. Now here's, watch this technique now. I'm going to choose Save. Let that render out. And again, you'll see that it's going to add this to my layers non-destructively at the very top. So turning this on and off, this is affecting just the subject. Now, even though I'm going to click on the background here now, and I'm going to do this again. I'm going to come over here, and let's activate this to do another new one. 
And just quickly with the background there, I'm going to come down again to mask. So it turns everything off. And I'm just going to use the paintbrush again. And I'm just going to click and drag over this area over here in this section. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to build on this by constantly painting. You see it's built, the, the, the red is stronger. Right, and just maybe a little bit more there. I'm gonna come over here just to do something different, just to show you how this works. Whether I would really do this in my composite, uh, I don't know, but uh, I'm thinking about adding some smoke and flames in the background and definitely where the flames are at, I would probably be adding this. But uh, again, this is just for demo purposes. Okay, once I have that done right there, I click on the check mark to accept that. And now let it render out and I'm gonna come over here to color and uh, down here, activate the color panel. So you can see the panel now is opening up. And yeah, I like that color right there. Let it render. And now I'm going to do something different. I'm going to add some glare to this. And when I do that, see how this changes over here. There's different points. Starts with two points. I'm going to go to six points. Let that render and change. You can see the look of that. And then you could change the amount of the glare if you want to pull that back, the intensity of it. I mean, that's all up to you. So I just modified that a little bit. Uh, again, you can go in there and change different things. But uh, just for demo purposes here, uh, there's my before, after, before, after. If you want to up the threshold of this, we could push this way up. I'm over-exaggerating this so we can see this on YouTube. Look at that. <laughs> that's way too much. But let's pull it back. Let it re-render. And let's still a little bit too much on the left side. And maybe I'll pull the glare option down a little bit. Okay, so I'm just, again, playing with this. If I click on Save, here's what I want to show you. As this renders out. Okay, notice that even though I had the bottom layer, which is the background, selected, it rendered this out and put it at the very top. So I'm just affecting, if I turn this on and off, the background, correct? Now, I could take this and move it down here. It doesn't change anything because it's only affecting, again, the background. And that's what I would do is change, rechange my stack. You can come over here and you can say, well, I'm going to pull the opacity down on this. Maybe it's a little bit too intense. So I'm going to drop that down close to 60% just to fine tune that. And I might even do things like this. I'm going to go on the background layer. Now, now this has nothing to do with the plugin, but this is, you know, if I'm working on my composite, this is sort of like second to the last I would do with all this lighting in that effects. But I would consider doing something like this. If I want to make that background a little bit darker, I would just maybe add, um, let's just do curves real fast to push this down, just to darken that background, give it more of a moody look. And then maybe come back here and pull the opacity up a little bit more to control that. And again, this is all very subjective uh, on how you want to do your composite work. But I love the plugin. Um, hopefully, you've learned something. And again, if uh, my uh, if you have any questions on this product, um, please feel free to email me. The email address is here at the bottom of the screen. It's also in the show notes. It's stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. Again, thank you for the people that have been supporting the channel by going to uh, buymeacoffee.com forward slash Stephen Photo Artist. Again, the link on that is at the very bottom here, and it's also in the show notes. The link to the website here will be in the show notes for you to check this out. I would say play around with the trial version. Until next time, see ya!